Well, hello, my name is Christopher Scott, and I'm the small groups pastor at Rocky Hill Community Church in Exeter, California. And in this video, I want to show you how to create new groups using Planning Center's Groups feature. Uh, so there's a new group we're going to be starting this fall with my wife and I um, at our church. And I wanted just to show you if you have a new group and you use the Groups features within Planning Center, how you can easily create a brand new group. Um, as a pastor or administrator or someone that oversees the small groups ministry at your church. So to create a new group, I'm going to go to the groups feature within Planning Center. And then this is where you can see our 17 groups and we're going to start a new group. So we're going to click on this green button here. The name of your group. Our group is going to be called the Deep Foundations Life Group. Right? Because we have a firm foundations life group that we do for new believers. This one's going to be deep foundations because it's going to be based on uh, systematic theology and Wayne Grudem's systematic theology. So I'm going to add a couple of members. Add myself right there. And then it'll say notify, continue. I don't need to notify them. Then you can add other new members. Um, let's just say we're going to add whoever you know you might be, you can add them. Now you want to get rid of that. And then next thing you want to do is you're going to want to go to your um, settings and start adjusting your settings right in here. Uh, Life Groups has, uh, Groups through Planning Center has some preset settings you can set up. I've never really messed around with those. I just customize them every time. So I want to override Life Group default settings. So this group is going to be meeting on Sundays. 6.30 p.m. Right. This, and then you're going to write a description of your group. This group will be studying the book um, Systematic Theology and Introduction to Biblical Doctrine by Wayne Grudem. Okay, just a brief description. I'll add more later. I'll probably put in uh, what will be the topics each semester, copy and paste those in there. And then the location. Uh, we're going to create a new location. I never really do people's specific home location, especially um, my home. You know, I'm never probably going <laughs> to um, put my physical address in there. So I'm Scott Home, and then I'm going to do Exeter, California. And that's going to just give a really um, like approximate deal here. It's not going to give an exact point. Um, so a non-member will see an approximate point. You're going to save that location. Under a lot of these settings, you're going to want to make sure you save every time because um, some of them will automatically save, some won't. So I know there's been several times that I've thought I've changed things or done things in here for our groups, and I come back and I never saved it, so it never changed. Right. So you just add your contact information here. Um, you don't have to add this because um, if people want to join a group through Planning Center Groups, they can request to join. And then from that, they will get the contact information once they're accepted. You can do it that way, or you can just put the contact information here. For me, I put it on there, um, but for all our other groups that aren't led by me, I don't add those. Um, enrollment, I'm going to override. We're going to auto-close it. Our groups, we limit them. Um, this is if you want to auto close the group on a specific day once it starts. I don't really care. They can join wherever. You can uh, auto close a group if the number of people exceeds that have registered. So for me, our groups are limited to 15 people, so I always put 15. And then notify the admin if it grows above, let's say, 10 um, right in there. So pretty much this will just give you a notification in the Life, life Groups uh, Planning Center's features. If you reach over 10 people, it will just give you a little tickler, a little notification at the top. And then if the auto close will actually um, list the group as closed on the website once you get to 15 people. Um, and then the events, override the events, list events publicly, sure. Ask leaders to take attendance. Um, so you can go within your page through Planning Center Groups and it'll list all the different groups and when they meet we want to list that publicly and then one of the great things about Planning Center is that it will send an email to the leader of your group every 
uh, every time the group has a meeting, about 10 minutes before the meeting, asking them to take attendance. And this is a way that automatically um, uploads the attendance and roster to Planning Center, one of the best features of Planning Center groups. So as you can see, some of the areas you have to save once you've changed them. See, I didn't even save it there. Um, and then others, like here, you don't have to save. So you just got to pay attention. Um, I always override the settings for um, what the public can see. Um, since I'm the leader of the group here and I am working for the church, I just list everything. I don't really care. Um, but as far as public, I don't want the public to be able to see who the members of this group are. And then as far as what the members of the group can see, they can see my name, photo, email, all that. That's fine. And then um, I want them to be able to see the other people's names, right? This is just what um, the public sees on the website where the page is listed and then what the members see if they ever go to the, the actual page. So those are the settings there. Make sure we saved everything. And then here um, you see members. I have myself as a member. We've added that. And then uh, let's say, let's do this. We're going to add Dave Miller. I have to do David Ward. This is our senior pastor. Continue. And then David Welsh. That's our youth pastor. All right, so you can see I have three members. Uh, first name, last name, contact information, and their role. And you want to make sure you make a leader of the group. I'm going to make myself that leader. And then when you make someone a leader, you want to make sure you click notify Christopher by email. Because when you do that, that leader will get an email saying you've been made a leader of so-and-so group. Um, and then from that email, they can click on the confirmation. And that will allow the leader of that group to be able to go in and uh, change the roster, update information, take attendance, change their calendar, all of those things. Um, so I'm not going to do it now because I'm still, eh, let's do it now. Um, so you'll submit that there, go there. Um, and then calendar, you're going to want to start creating the days and times that they meet. So let's say we're going to start that weekend, that month, Sunday after um, Labor Day. Um, so the interesting thing is you can list the day and times that the group meets, but then you also have to create events so that your leaders can take attendance, right? So we're going to say Deep Foundations Life Group. The group starts at 630 p.m. ends at 8 p.m. and that's on Sunday the 10th sounds good um, and then I'm gonna say weekly and then I always just have our groups um, do their attendance until the end of the year uh, let's say till the 17th they probably won't meet on the 17th but that's okay um, so that's just what I do um, and then I at the end of every year I update the, who's meeting and all that um, so deep foundations life group 9 10 6 30 p.m. 8 p.m. Uh, gives you the location, Scott home, and then you say create, and it should automatically populate. There it is, and it'll show up on the church's calendar as well. Uh, resources is a tab here where you can, as the pastor or organizer of the groups, you can add resources that the groups can use. Um, every single life group that we have has access to our doctrine and core values here, um, and then you can add specific um, resources for specific groups. I don't really add much because not a lot of our leaders know how to get here or bother uh, going to it. And so with the groups you also want to add properties. This is done on the back end of Planning Center's groups feature. So you got to have already done these before you start creating groups. So I'm going to go through here. Uh, stage of life. This is a group for an adult. And then neighborhood. This is in Exeter. I don't know why it's not going there. Um, regularity it meets weekly and then group attributes there's no and, and then uh, you just this isn't one of those areas that you have to save you just click away from it and it's already populated and then deep foundations life group uh, last thing you always want to do is choose an image for your group um, so you can do that and then um, you can make edits here on the title as well as any notes so let's say um, as a pastor usually I'll start jotting some notes in here of who I think would be a good addition right um, look to uh, let's say Brad Kennedy and Julia Kennedy as potential members who have wanted this type of a group 
right? So for example, we started this group, my wife and I are going to, or we're going to start this group because we've had uh, two people specifically request it, right? So this is just something um, I'd say, make sure we talk to them because um, they have expressed an interest. So that's how you uh, create a group with planning center groups. The last couple steps, I have some additional things I wanna add here, so I'm not gonna make the group public, but you can, once you're ready, I wanna add a photo and some more descriptions. You can add, uh, you can make the group public. So right now it's private, it's listed on the website. Actually, it's not listed on the website because it's private, right? So it is, um, if they go to our page, so we'll just go to it, Rocky Hill X Center show you so if you go to our church's home page then you click on life groups All right so you, if, if someone comes to this page looking for a group to join they're not going to see that deep foundations life group on there because the group is listed as private right these groups this group is listed as public but it's listed as closed this group is listed as public but it's listed as open so that's the two features here, right? Um, so once you list your group as public, it will show up on your page for your church. And then once um, you're looking for members, you want to list the group as open, which will let people join that life group, right? You can go here and they can click join and then get involved. So I hope this was helpful for you. My name's Christopher Scott. Uh, I'll be uh, posting this video on YouTube for you all to use. Hope it's a good resource for you uh, if you start using Planning Center or want a refresher or have some new staff maybe you hire that um, your church uses Planning Center but they've never used Planning Center before. Hopefully this video can be a great resource for you. Hope to talk to you again soon in another video and uh, we'll talk to you soon.